morning makers happy thursday i hope you all are doing well cheers i've got my iced tea already earl grey iced tea going for the day and i've had a lovely morning i got up super early like 4 30 or something crazy just naturally because i went to bed really early and i got plenty of sleep i definitely still needed coffee this morning so i've had my couple of cups but um yeah, I'm having a day where I think I had enough sleep. I think I've been processing kind of the changes in life that are starting to happen a little bit. And I am in, today I woke up in like action, ready to go mode. And my mind is going all over the place <laughs> on things I wanna do and explore and learn. I mean, it runs the gamut between work-related things that I wanna do, more webinars, more strategy sessions with colleagues from around the country. Um, we're really circling the wagons in the performing arts industry right now, as you can imagine. And it's a, it's a mix of a really horrible time and a really exciting time. So I'm all over the place there. I have like to-do lists that I need to make for work. I started already making some things for my business for Stitching the High Nose. There's so much that I wanna do starting next month. Some digital content that I wanna bring to you all and some new bag designs or at least one new bag design and some fun things that are starting to pan out here with fellow business owners um, in the Bay Area in Northern California. I'll have more details about it at a later time. And, and then my own makes. Like I started looking at Ravelry last night for cardigan patterns and I want to continue that this morning. Um, and sewing patterns. I'm going to be going up this weekend. I'm going to grab a little sip here. Hold on. <laughs> so refreshing. It's going to be another scorcher here today. So I'm already into my iced tea, as you can see. So yes, it was getting really cold on my hands too. But I'm going up this weekend to see family again. Um, I'm going about every other weekend right now when my nephew is with the family and um so i can spend time with him and cuddle and oh, i can't wait to see him but also to help out my mama and help her continue to get settled into her new home and um and also her sewing room which maybe i'll give you a sneak peek of three symbols 3.0 that's a tongue twister for you um and that's her big like studio sewing creativity space. Um, and I wanna just brainstorm with her uh, about some sewing patterns that I'm looking at for garments. Um, I mean, it's I'm all over the place today, so apologies, but it's I, I'm inspired. So I'm gonna try to channel it all into my journal and just really kind of do kind of vision board stuff and just really take advantage of this headspace that I'm in. I mean, it's even like, I was thinking of Agnes, my dress form back there. She's named after my great grandmother who was a seamstress. And um, I was looking at a newsletter this morning from Cash Moret, who is a plus size, even though I don't like saying plus size, but plus size range, um, uh, and more on that at another time, but um, but she has wonderful patterns for the larger, bustier ladies, and she was showing in some of her photographs, um, her dress form or a dress form that they use, and I realized, you know, Agnes, I have to expand her. It's like an adjustable, like the little knobs there, you can adjust to your different measurements of whoever you're making garments for. I have to expand her like all the way out for me. And it doesn't feel good. And then you don't get a good fit. And then sometimes in some measurements, it doesn't even expand out enough. So it's like, if I really want to be serious about making garments, then I need to start saving my pennies for a proper dress form and just, you know, that kind of stuff, which makes me excited. And yeah, oh, I just, yeah. Part of it is listening to podcasts that are really inspiring. Love to Sew is an amazing podcast, which I've probably mentioned at some point, but if not, oh my gosh, go check those ladies out. I'll leave a link down below in the description box. 
I'm learning so much from them and also being, it's also a reinforcement of how much I have learned and how much skill I, I've, I've, um, how much my skills have been honed in the last couple of years, um, sewing, especially for the shop. And, um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to like plug in all this energy into my journal and boards and all kinds of stuff. And I will check in with you all later. I'm already back. <laughs> I just remembered a tool that I got last year or a year and a half ago to help me hone in and focus during times like this. I have when I'm like super inspired, when I have had like different tools that I use for work and I use like the Microsoft uh, 365 series of tools for project management and things like that. But for small business and for a one woman show owned business, it needs something a little bit different and for a creative, creative business, at least for me anyway. So I remembered I got this lovely thing that I'll show you a close up here in a minute, which is a hatch book. And if you're a long time viewer, you might remember me showing you this when I first got it. I switched along the line to my iPad into a digital planner. Um, so I haven't really used this and I transferred a lot of what I had already put in here into a digital version that I created for myself. But this, the way that this is laid out, I'll show you here in a second, makes a lot more sense and is a little bit easier in the more tactile form. So I think I'm gonna go back to using this. Let me show you. So pardon the dirt and dust here. <laughs> this is from, um, I forget where the company is called, but I got it through a company called Ink and Volt, which are the makers of my digital planner. I get the PDF version of the planner and they have a beautiful printed version and I've used them for a couple of years now. And they worked with a company that had a Kickstarter to make a, that make, is making a notebook that will help you turn your ideas into reality, helping you focus and go through these three steps, conceive, incubate, and hatch. I'll leave a link down below so you can um, discover this and kind of look into it further if you're interested. And in this, it's separated into these um, three areas and there's like inspirational quotes, which I love. And you have the conceive, which is kind of a table of contents. And this is like a year and a half ago. These were kind of my ideas. And it's kind of fun because some of these have come to fruition. But you put down your idea. So like today, I'm probably going to be like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and then you rate your excitement about that idea, which will help you prioritize where to put your focus first. You kind of put the difficulty on bringing that idea to life. Um, and then you put... Uh, kind of the table contents here is the incubate page and I'll show you that here in a second and then hatch number I have to refresh my memory on what that's about so I have it in categories so I had like bags marketing miscellaneous items and I've got a few more that I have on the digital kind of this type of page that I created and then I've got like super early stage sketches of some bags from early in the day. This is what turned out to be my first um, cross-stitch bag with that big old window. It's so fun to see that. And some other ideas that I had. And then we get to the next page and it's great because it has like these little tabs here. So actually in the first kind of area you get, oh no, sorry, I'm all over the place. So you get your category, then you get into these kind of brainstorming pages where you're just conceiving and sketching and brainstorming and putting different things. You could paste photos, you can, um, you know, put links to websites that you're inspired by. And then you do this incubate section, which is where you evaluate your ideas, uh, write down questions to help you assess the potential of bringing those ideas to fruition. And I'm so paraphrasing, but it's great. It's so organized. It's like a project manager's dream to have this kind of laid out. And it's great. This is a lot of the things in my work that 
I ask myself and I've just learned to do over time, but it's great to put it in writing in here. So you look at description of what your idea is, the features, the possible features, so the things you definitely wanted to have, you know, some things that maybe you want variations of, who the market and the audience is for this product or for this idea, or it could be digital content. How will it add, and this is a key one that I myself sometimes lose focus on, how will it add value to your audience, to your, to the people who are buying your product? How does it fit into your values and your mission? And does it already exist? And if so, how can you make it better? And this one, I would say, I think you have to make sure not to get caught in comparison syndrome here um, because a lot of things do already exist, but, and, and it, you might make it better, but regardless, you, you are going to add your specific voice to whatever you're creating. And that's totally worth putting out to the world, regardless of if it already exists or even if it's not the best of the best, it's yours, it's your voice. And that's not really up to you. It's up to your customer to decide so this is great and then the second page is how will it be made um, challenges resources and people I mean it really goes through thinking through the whole process which is so great because sometimes you think of a thing and you have all of this just swimming around in your head and this really gets it onto paper and starts the process of creating the thing um, how do you want to make this? How would you define success? So that kind of ties to what I was saying down here a little bit. Um, and any other further research, like this could also be where you put um, some inspiration of some comparable products that you were inspired by that you want to put your own voice to or, um, and yeah, evaluation at the end of it. And then you can say, decide, like catch it means you're going forth and conquering and creating the thing. You're going to put it on the back burner because you went through all this process and went, oh, no, 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 <laughs> it's too much. Or you can abandon because you go, oh, wait, this doesn't add value or it doesn't fit with my mission right now. Um, but you'll have it all recorded so that if it does down the line, you will have started this work already and can pick up where you left off. And then, by the way, I, I hate saying this, but I'm not sponsored. I'm just like a total Virgo fangirl of this company. So just have to put that out there. And then the third area is Hatch. And I think there's like, if I remember correctly, there's like a YouTube video um, where they kind of go through this process. So this is how the hatch part is how it becomes real. So this is where you would put the hatch page number in that table of contents. So I'll go back really fast and show you. So you put the incubate page, which I just was talking about, and then the hatch number page. So you can see the whole process. So you have specifications and scope. I need to refresh my memory on what they really mean by this. And then you get into the tasks bit. So you go, okay, I need to buy the fabric. I need to buy uh, a new printer for this that can do stickers or whatever, or, and you need to have it by this date. And so you go into full project management mode. And for me, I always start from the launch date and work backwards. So yeah, and then you have like, oh, I great. I love that there's this space to kind of just sketch and um, write down all the kind of the random things that come about. Um, oh, and look at that. There's some tips. Does this blank page scare you? <laughs> this is so great. Yeah, I think I'm going to use this physical copy. I'm going to look online right now um, to see. Oh, look at all this hatch area. I love this so much. Um, yeah, I think that's the gist of it. I'm gonna look online. I've got, there's some like tips and stuff in the back. Sorry, hold on. Two Tumbleweeds, that's a company that came up with this. Hatch notebook for makers and entrepreneurs. 
So I'm on their website, Inconvolt, right now to see if they have a digital version of this book or I might go to Two Tumbleweeds' this, um, website. I haven't been there in like over a year. But I will leave the link down below for Ink and Volt and this Hatch Notebook so you can explore more. I'm gonna switch you around. I'm so glad I remembered this. I'm so happy. Okay, now I will check in with you all later because now I have something to pour all of my ideas into. I'm back again. Just to let you know, I have not been able to find a legit PDF version to purchase. I think it looks like a couple of people scanned it and put it up online where you could do it, but I don't want to do that. That's not, that's not cool, man. So I'm just going to stick with the physical version that I have. Fork in me, I am done. Woo, that was a flurry of meetings. I am going to finish a few projects, but do it from this little red chair and knit in between. Uh, I'm brain fried. <laughs> Grateful, so grateful for this beautiful meal. I am gonna call it a night here. I know I still need to share the patterns that I think I haven't narrowed down to three for the cardigan, so stay tuned. Sorry to keep teasing that. But the day was very full of meetings and some fun phone catch up uh, FaceTimes and whatnot with friends, so, and family as well. I am looking forward to, I'm like, I can't wait. I do have to let this cool off, but I'm so hungry. It smells so good. But um, I am gonna be going up to Sacramento this weekend to see my family again. I'm so excited. I think I might've mentioned that this morning or yesterday. I can't remember. Today felt like two days. Um, and I'm so excited. I'm gonna go up after work tomorrow. Um, and then I'll be combining i'll probably be combining saturday and sunday's vlogs together so they'll come out on monday so there won't be one on sunday um but there'll be one tomorrow and there'll be one saturday and there'll be one monday that'll be a combo so i'm looking forward to spending some time with them and batch cooking for mama and a whole bunch of stuff so anyway enough yammering time to eat and i will see you all tomorrow hope you're doing well makers see you soon night